we're going dog sledding. <laughs> from Finnish Lapland. It's super paradise out here. It's a cold one. But today we are doing something really exciting. It's one of the reasons we came to Lapland. We are going to meet the Huskies and we're going on a dog sled. We are so excited. Like we've watched several videos of this. It looks super fun. So animal tourism can be a really ticky thing. There are definitely some things in the world involving animals and places that you do not want to do that because um, the animals aren't treated well and it's just it's not something they love doing. Um, but from pretty much all accords, huskies love the snow and they love to run and they like doing this. There are some things here in Finland that you should ask about if you do an animal safari. Um, the dogs are supposed to be on a run schedule. They're only supposed to run so often. There should be a certain number of them and you should be able to ask to see where they live. If they won't show you where they live, then that's a big red flag. So there are some things in play to keep the animals safe. Um, and we are for sure that that is happening here. So anyway, um, let's go ride some dog sleds. Suited up and ready to go. So excited. So the way to get your luggage around here is by sled. I'm ready to go. Yes. Yeah. Then we go. So, passenger sit inside, back as possible, with many passengers. First big one, then smaller and smaller. And so, take a big chest, made up for the fall asleep. <laughs> so, hands and feet inside. Yep. This is more it breaks. But it's not like a new car. This is doing nothing. Mm. You need a little bit more your body weight. But you need to balance this. So when the track turns to the left, your weight, same direction, where the track is. Like driving a bicycle, same, same thing. No need to do anything extra. <laughs> I don't know if you guys can hear their not, but the dogs are so excited. Like they know we're here and they are going crazy in there. Like really light break. Okay, light break first couple seconds. Okay. are 
were so smart. Like, they were dragging towards the end. They were getting tired. And we got, like, maybe 100 yards from home, and they realized where we were, and they took off. They were like, woo, we're awesome. You're an official dog sled driver. It was fun. I'm so proud of you. You did good. <laughs> so we named this one Spaz because she's, uh, she's got a little ADD, and she, she ran most of the race with her head backwards and had to poop several times, so. <laughs> she also really likes to be between Ryan's legs. <laughs> you guys did so good. They kept getting so mad at us because we would slow them down and they were like, especially the white one in the back, he's got ADD. So during this point in the day is when our lovely microphone decided to stop working again. All the bad words. But anyway, I was so proud of this group of travelers because they came ready with every question that I wanted answered about this resort, about this tour, and about these dogs. Um, and our guide was so gracious to sit and answer them all over hot cocoa. So these dogs do have a run schedule. They are only allowed to run so many kilometers over every few days. He was explaining to us that contrary to typical belief, most full bred huskies will run for the majority of their life. He said they really don't get too old to run. And if there is a dog that's brought to them for one reason or another that's born that can't run, it's too angry or has some kind of health condition, he said that it is adopted generally by one of them. They just take it home or a friend takes it home. He said his own dog was an adoption from a different kennel. We left Apuka Resort feeling really, really good about this particular dog sledding adventure. We can't say that about all of them. We know some other YouTubers have had a less than wonderful experience, um, but for us, this was a wonderful day and these people are awesome, these dogs are awesome, and this place is awesome, so we can highly recommend. So he said that these puppies are like under a year old, and after a year old they kind of get to start playing running, but not really like pulling people and doing a real job. You almost lost your glove. And then at like... <laughs> And then at about two or two and a half, depending on their personality, they get to <laughs> they get to start running on their real team. This one's trying to eat my pinky and my glove. <laughs> hey, hey, no, no, I need that. I need that. My fingers will freeze. It's not me. No, 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 no biting. <laughs> so our guide Timo was just telling us some facts about the dogs, and he said that they eat about 50 kilograms of meat a day between the 70 dogs, so it's like 110 pounds of meat um, because they can pack on, he said in, well he said last year they didn't have any visitors at all and so the dogs were like sad <laughs> and he said they can lose their muscle in as much as a week if they're not running. Um, and so towards the end of the season people started trying to book and the dogs hadn't ran all year and they had to tell people no because they weren't in shape. He said it takes them about a month to two months to get in shape. They can put on five pounds, four to five pounds of muscle in less than a month, which would be like a human putting on 20 pounds of muscle. So that's pretty crazy. They're super athletes. But he said that he actually worked without pay for a different kennel, just running dogs all day, every day, from sun up to sundown last winter, just so that they wouldn't get sad and out of shape. You're an awesome person. <laughs> that didn't go very well. 
That didn't go very well. <laughs> Are you stuck? <laughs> I feel like you didn't sink as much as you thought you would. <laughs> That was very graceful. <laughs> it seems very counterintuitive, possibly hazardous to my well-being to put on this swimsuit right now. Okay, you guys, so one of the traditional cultural things of Finland is the sauna. In fact, they're obsessed with the sauna. Estimates run for anywhere from 2 million to 3.3 million saunas in the country, a country of like 5.3 million people. The sauna is even identified as a cultural importance by the UNESCO World Heritage Site, so it's a big deal. There is a traditional way to do it. We're not going to be able to do that today because this is the YouTube and we can't be all naked and stuff. That's a lot of post editing and a lot of blurring. And which not gonna do that. Plus, we are going to do the full shebang today. So, in order to do the finished sauna properly, you have to get in the sauna, get super, super hot, and then you either go run and jump immediately into the closest body of cold water, or you go roll in snow. <laughs> Since we are not close to a body of water, we are choosing the snow version. Um, I am not looking forward to it. I hate being cold. So I'm putting on my big girl pants today and we're gonna see what happens. So we gotta shower first, then we get in the sauna, then we go roll in the snow, then we run back and get in the sauna again. And um, yeah, that's the plan. Here we go. It's nice and toasty in here. So I was reading this morning and it said that the sauna became popular and they were originally just wooden huts out in the forest where you would light a wood fire in the middle and the steam would heat the room. And they were used for the woodsmen because of the intense cold and like the wear and tear on their muscles from working in the cold all the time. So the sauna was like to ease their muscles and warm their bodies, um, obviously to <laughs> warm their bodies. But. So in order to really turn up the sweat, you're supposed to pour water on these hot rocks over here. We've been told to be very careful because it can like fly up and steam in your face. So only a little bit, she said, and just kind of toss it on there. So that's the plan. Okay, so she told us a little bit of water, and it didn't look very dramatic when we threw it on, but it heated this little room up immediately. Everything got really steamy, and whew, it got hot fast. I mean, it was already hot, but it got way hotter fast, so whew, that little method works wonders and quickly. There's no level of warm that can prepare you for this. I'm so not prepared. But I think I'm as warm as I'm going to get, so here we go. I'm so nervous. <laughs> Take it out. Oh my goodness. Um, 
exhilarating. Did it. All right, so we came to this coffee shop. We're gonna try a pula. All right, so it's a pastry and it's more of a snack that have a tea or coffee, but it's not for breakfast, it's just a snack food. So we, we try, we're gonna try this, this is the first time we've had these, so. They can also have vanilla icing or walnuts on top to add a little extra flair or flavor to it. Let's see what this is. I don't know what that one is. Your guess is as good as mine. Okay. <laughs> Alright guys, so the plain one is definitely like chia seed bread with some just like rock, rocky sugar on top and it's super tasty. And then this one has cinnamon and cardamom and like a vanilla glaze with some almond slivers on it. And it tastes like an amazing cinnamon roll slash donut. How fun are those guys? So cute. No kayaking on that river. Nope. All right, Erica, play us, play us a tune. Should I keep it to Mexico? Go, like, take it to Mexico? Of course you should. My hands are freezing. Yeah, I was going to say, your hands are cold, aren't they? <laughs> reminder of how hard this COVID stuff has been yeah. on everyone like we ran into a street artist on actually we ran into our tour yeah. guide from last <laughs> night and she was with a couple of friends a street artist and another man and he was just telling us that he's moving to Helsinki because and I said oh really why are you moving and he's like well to be honest loneliness yeah and like it broke my heart and then he said you know, it's so nice to see you. And then actually, this is really weird to be standing here talking because for two years, no He's, one no has one, talked yeah, to anyone. Yeah, no one sits around, yeah. He's like, nobody has talked to anyone on the streets in two yeah. years. And I was like, really? And he said, yeah, like, I, and then at the end, I was giving them all a hug and I said, okay, you two finish, man. You have to hug me. I was like, I know you're not huggers, but you have to. And he goes, actually, I really love hugs. And then he just like bear uh -huh. hugged both of us and like, I felt like I thought he was gonna cry for a minute, but I think he just genuinely needed human uh -huh. interaction. Like it's been so lonely up here, I think. And yeah. thankfully things are opening back up now, but so prayers that he found a new home in Helsinki and in, friends. In friends. And, yeah, because yeah. I think it's been really lonely up here. Today is our last day in Finland. We are leaving for somewhere we're not quite sure yet. There's still a lot of things we wanted to do in Finland. We wanted to go further north to Lapland. We wanted to go to the awesome city of Turku. And we still never found that cheese coffee stuff. But it's time to go. And you gotta stop the bleeding somewhere because Finland is expensive. So, we're saving that stuff for next time. And now, we're moving on. Next week we take you to quite possibly the most adorable city on the planet. Tallinn, Estonia. It's adorable. The cafes are awesome. The architecture is beautiful and it is out of some sort of fairy tale landscape. So make sure you hit the subscribe button and come back next week for Tallinn, Estonia. So we just Wait, look out for skiers. Okay. Okay, we're good. I think you just go numb. Okay, they don't really feel much of anything. Oh my yeah. oh, arms numb. <laughs> yeah, you just go numb. But, well, what a rush. <laughs> I, I feel like I hit my elbow on something hard, but also it's numb, so.
I don't really know. Oh, that was fun. Ah. Now I need to shave my legs. <laughs> that is a pretty burger. And it's beef. <laughs> Are you sure? Not yeah. reindeer? I'm hungry.